Hello, my name is Alan Foom, and today I'm going to talk about risking multiple models on oil and gas prospects. So this is another one of my series of videos of how geologists risk oil and gas prospects. So let's do a quick recap on risking oil and gas prospects. So risking is the chance of success, and chance of success is the chance of all of the, these play elements working. So you've got your reservoir, you've got your seal, you've got your trap, you've got your charge, and you've got your source. All of them have to work. One of them fails, you've got a dry hole. And chance of success, chance of getting the volume that you predict, is the probability of the source working, probability of the reservoir working, probability of the trap working, probability of the charge working, and the probability of the seal working. So you've got to be in this yellow uh, blob. And the work we do is something called the confidence smile. Now this is not to do with dentistry, but to do with uh, the probability of getting, of increasing your knowledge and in, uh, improving the accuracy of your probability. So you've got this matrix of um, your chance of success. So you've got high, medium, and low, and you've got your current knowledge level, low, medium, and high. So when you're starting at low, you're kind of at 50-50, and you really want to be either here, where you have high uh, knowledge, high confidence, or here, where you've got high confidence, but low um, probability of chance of success. So here, if you're here, you're going to stop drilling because you really don't think it's going to work. Whereas you're here, you quite think it's highly likely to work. Now, you could still get an unpleasant surprise, and you do occasionally, but this is where you'd really want to be. So our work is to try to move to the edges of the confident smile. But sometimes you'll have multiple models. Sometimes two or more models may be possible. In this situation, you've got two models. Now, you could obviously have more in different case situations. So you've got your initial interpretation. You've got your model A and your model B. Model A has a chance of success, chance of being dry. Model B has a chance of success and chance of being dry. Now, these would be different for the two different models. The values would also be quite different. And these would have a different probability of occurrence. And uh, you can use your geological knowledge, geological evidence to assign probabilities. Now, probability A might be high and probability B might be low, but you can't discount it, so you'll include this in the analysis. And you can combine these via this type of decision tree, which is a good way of illustrating what could be going on. So an example here is a fault seal. So you've got a fault. This is a cross-section. You've got your sandstone reservoir. And you've got uh, sand or shale contact here. You've got shale top seal. So you've got model A, which is this bit in here. A possible LVC to the sand on sand contact. Or you've got a structural spill point where you're relying on sand on sand contact across the fault. Now, that could work through cataclysis, shale gouge, etc. And you'll have a probability of having this fault fail or probability of this fault succeeding as a seal. And you will have different probabilities. So working it through, you have an initial analysis. So you have your reservoir, 75% chance. You know, it's a mature base and you kind of have a handle of what you think you go, uh, is going on. High chance of success for, for source because you're in a mature basin. Relatively high chance of success of migration and trap presence because you've got 3D. Now, if you look at model A only, you've got a 70% chance of uh, these two seals working. So getting onto the having hydro, any hydrocarbons here at all, 30% chance of failure, 70% chance of having some success. So you look at the risk elements common to both models. So that's effectively the reservoir and your migration. So 48%, 52% chance of all, all the common elements working. 30% chance of total seal failure. 30% chance of sand on uh, sand uh, seal success. 40% chance of only model A working. So again, you have different values for uh, possibilities that are there, and you have different success values for model A and uh, model B. If you're looking at your probability of exceedance, so you've got 36, 37% chance of getting onto the dance floor, then this is model A's curve, that effectively stops here, and then you're having to rely on fault seal to get model B. So that's your recoverable volume versus probability of exceedance, so the jump when the models change. Again, when you're doing an analysis of this prospect, you'd assign values to all of these success chances of success, and you have extra monetary values, and I've got a video on expected monetary values on my channel. Other situations where this could happen would be where you have different reservoir facies, so for example, high net to gross system or low net to gross system. Again, I've got a video on my channel on net to gross. Uh, for example, you could have channels and overbanks. This would be a situation where this would work. Now, these two different models would have quite different volumetrics, quite different recovery factors, also different chances of successes. Now, you can do quite a lot of work to try to get to a position where you have an understanding of that, 
you know, based on seismic, based on seismic uh, attributes, geological correlation, sedimentary models, etc. Um, but you'll have some uncertainty that's still there. So you'll have a cost of chance success of model A works, probability of model A being being there, being the right model, and probability of being a dry hole. Because this, again, here you can still have reservoir failure, you can still have seal failure, you can still have charge failure, etc. And then model B, where you're in a low net to grow system, you have different chance success. Again, potential success, potential dry hole. Obviously, in this sort of situation, the reservoir chance success would also be lower. Now, you can also have looking at oil or gas fill. Now, your prospect uh, may have mainly oil, may have, may have solely gas, or could have a mixture of the two. So basic modeling will try to help you understand generation, how to come generation migration. You can try to predict gas versus oil fill, but you're never going to be 100% certain until you drill. Analogs and different discovery seals help you predict that. So you have one minus cause as a dry hole, then cause of having some hydrocarbons, then you have relative chance of gas, relative chance of oil, you have an oil value, and have a gas value. Particularly in frontier basins, this is a big issue because you really don't understand what you're doing. So using this decision tree to look at where they are. If you're in a situation where you have a gas cap and an oil rim, i.e. a mixed fluid model, where the oil is below bubble point, the gas has liberated itself into a gas gap, you deal with that one in the volumetrics, so you'll have an assign, you'll have a gas oil contact that uh, that you model within that. So just to sum up, hydrocarbon prospects can have several different valid geological models that may still be successful. Examples of the models that we looked at here: fault seal, facies, also porosity systems and limestone, fluid fill, oil versus gas. There are quite a few others as well. Now all of these models will have different chances of success. So you'll need to estimate these models will also have significantly different uh, volumes and value. So you need to know which of, which side of the decision tree you're on and which side of the decision tree has value. So when you're incorporating uh, all of these things into an overall prospect analysis, you need to assign probabilities of occurrence to these models based on the geological evidence that you have. And this will change as you do more work. If you have a model, for example, like in a fault seal model, model A may be very small, uh, you could really perhaps count that as a failure. So uh, if it's got a very low value in case of success, you may wish to just put that into the, into the negative territory. But the key point here is, have you considered all the reasonable outcomes? And decision trees really help with trying to clarify your thoughts, clarify your ideas, and explain what your ideas are to other people. So thank you very much. Please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.